<laughs> it was a great Monroe story. Uh, they had Mr. Monroe on a panel, a CMA, or I don't know what it was exactly, but but uh, uh, the guy was the Steppenwolf, you know, was was on on the on the, the panel, and Rodney Crowell and and uh, our good buddy Steppenwolf, and uh, as, as Lester, I'm sorry. And uh, so anyway, they, they were talking about the music industry and all kind of stuff, how it changed and everything. And here, Mr. Monroe was, you know, sitting there kind of dawdling off. I'm, you know, he's really interested. And uh, anyway, they were talking about how many records they had sold, you know. And so they asked John, you know, with Steppenwolf, said, uh, how, how many records you sold? Oh, it's, you know, probably, you know, 35, 40 million, something like that, you know. And so they asked this next one, you know, and he said, oh, yeah, w way up in the millions, you know. And, and uh Got to Rodney and he said something. They got to M Mr. Monroe. Uh, how many records you believe you've sold in your life? He said, uh, "Well, uh, you know, I I don't know, but 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 it's a way on up there." <laughs> <laughs> and it was. It was. That's really one of the signs there. that this music's really going to live is that you know that that people are writing new songs in it. Any kind of genre has to have new you know, new music coming into it all the time to sustain. You can't just uh, go over and, you know, re redo Uncle Penn, you know, and, and uh, although I have. Uh, <laughs> Looks like somebody did. Yeah, that. and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Monroe uh, came up to me at the Opry one night, and he said, uh, Ricky, uh, I got a check from Uncle Penn from that song you cut, and boy, it was a powerful check. <laughs> it just gone number one, you know, a couple of weeks before, and he, and he said, you can record all my songs if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was kind of that way when Elvis oh, got yeah. Blue Moon of Kentucky. If it'll he? help you, that's what he told it. He said, I told Elvis, if it'll help you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was really powerful up in that country. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I really need to tell you this. I'm going to do one of Bill's old pieces here. But I really feel being led to tell you this story. Tom Ewing called me and wanted to know if I would fill in for the bluegrass book, play guitar for Bill Monroe. Well, I wasn't even really nervous about it because he'd been playing with us a lot at the Bell Cove Club, you know, and everything. I thought, oh man, I can actually say I was a bluegrass boy, you know. <laughs> so I go to this place, he tells me where they're gonna be to play. It's in town here. And when I get there, Tater Tate comes up to me and he says, uh, Larry, do you have a hat? <laughs> And I says, uh, well, no, Taylor, I don't have a hat, you know. That's all right, I've got Tom's. Uh, and I said, well, you know, I don't wear hats, man. I don't, I don't. He said, well, you know how that old man is? That's so, Tater. You know, I just had pretty <laughs> exactly. good clothes on. I wanted to do good for it. So I went in the bathroom. And it was in a huge box, this big. And I took this thing out and I put it up on my head and it hit me about mid inch. <laughs> so I looked at myself in the mirror and I thought, man, I don't know. I turned my head. My head turned inside the hat now. So I got a lot of paper towels out of the, you know, and I stuck them up in the hat. And then I put the hat back down on my head and Fixed it up a little bit, you know. And man, I just I got to thinking a lot of I walk out there and all this stuff falls down now. This happened, you know. So I decided against the hat. I took the hat off, put it in the box, you know, and uh, I went and told Tater, I said, Tater man, I just can't I can't, you know. I said, I can't. I look at myself and I can't I can't make myself do it. So I went and played the whole show with him, and he never said a word to me about oh. it, ever. Never said a word to me about it. So the hatless blue The only boy. hatless bluegrass boy in existence. <laughs> <laughs> Man.